everyone, this is Steve Huff from stevehuffphoto.com. I'm here today to tell you guys all about the brand new Leica T. This is the brand new Leica T camera from Leica. Now before you go any further, if you haven't been to my website yet at stevehuffphoto.com, I already posted my full 10,000 word review over there with tons of images, all my thoughts on the brand new Leica T. This video is basically a companion video to that re review. So what you'll see here is a quick overview of the T, the EVF, the zoom lens that comes with it, the build, the strap system, the battery, the brand new touch screen interface, which is unlike any other touch screen interface on any other camera, it's really unique. So um, you might wanna check out the review at stefaphoto.com and watch this as a companion because this is going to go over everything about the brand new Leica T, so check it out. Okay, everyone, here we are with the brand new Leica T. Now, if you read my review over at the website, stefaphoto.com, you will see that this Leica T is an all aluminum body. It is made from a solid brick of aluminum and each T body takes one dude with wearing gloves and a polishing rag 45 minutes to polish each and every Leica T. This is a handmade in Germany at the brand new Leica factory in Wetzlar. This is a brand new handmade Leica Germany camera. This is not a Panasonic. It's not rebadged anything. The lens is also a Leica lens. It's the zoom lens. And while the lens is um, made in Japan, it is not made by Panasonic like many of the rumors had thought. At least that is what Stefan Daniel told me directly when I met with him in New York to preview the Leica T. I asked him straight up, is this lens made by Panasonic? And he said, no. He said, it's a true Leica lens. And basically they make them in Japan to pass the savings on to us. Because if they made this lens in Germany, it would be just as expensive as the M lenses. And that is not good when you're trying to save money on a camera like the Leica T. Um, so a lot of people are bummed out, I can already tell, um, that this does not have a built-in viewfinder. I'll have to admit I was a little bummed out as well because I much prefer built-in viewfinders. So the Leica T does not have a built-in viewfinder. But what is special about the T is that, like I said, with its all metal construction, I mean it's quality guys, you can feel it. Um, you have these super smooth metal dials so this dial here, when I use the camera in aperture priority mode, I use this dial, um, or when I use it with M lenses, for example, this is the dial I use to uh, change the, uh, to give focus magnification. This is the dial I use to change ISO, and I usually use auto ISO when I've been shooting the Leica T. So it's very simple, you have two dials right here. You have your movie button right here because it does HD 720 or 1080 movies and you have your shutter button and then of course your power button. That's all there is button wise on the camera because on the back you just have a slick screen with no buttons or pads or any of that stuff whatsoever. What I want to show you now is the battery system. As you can see the battery has the cover pre-attached onto it so it's a proprietary battery which I have no problem with. When I use Leica cameras, I use Leica batteries, they seem to work very well. Um, but this battery works just like the S system, which is their twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 system. Clicks into place. If you want to take the battery out, you pull on that little doohickey right there. And it doesn't mean the battery is coming out. You have to click it and then it comes back out. So it's very secure, very easy. There's no door that's going to break like on those cheaper cameras, sometimes the battery doors come loose or break open. You have your tripod mount here on the bottom, very simple. Um, now, where the cool thing comes into play is when you turn it on. So I'm gonna turn it on here for you guys. And you're gonna see right there that everything you see is a touch screen. So you have up here all your settings, and I'm gonna set this down and change the camera angle so I can show you guys exactly how this works. But the touchscreen interface is very beautiful, very slick, very Apple-esque. It works a lot like an iPad and iPhone in many ways. And I said in my review over at the website, if Apple were to make a camera 
this would be it. Um, it has so many things that follow the Apple, you know, beliefs and philosophy, simplicity being one of them. It just works being another because I've had no issues with this camera in use. And before I get into all of that, oh, let me show you the cool flash. You turn the power button on a little bit further and there's your flash. It pops up like a little James Bond kind of tool. There we are. So the flash is right there. Um, but the Leica T is an APS-C sensor, 16 megapixels. It's the same sensor that is in the Leica X Vario. Now many of you may have seen my Leica X Vario review and if you did then you know that uh, I liked it but I didn't love it. I pointed out all the weaknesses it had because it had some and it was a little frustrating at times. I've used this for the last week. Leica only let me use it for a week but um, I've had zero frustrations, zero problems, zero issues, no freeze-ups, no lock-ups, no focus problems. Um, no lens problems. I had no handling problems, no issues with the touchscreen. In fact, after using this touchscreen, I wish all cameras had the same setup. So I'm going to make a prediction that in 2016, the new Leica M will have a similar control on the back. Uh, unless there ends up being problems with this or issues, but I have not had any. It's very slick and I'll show you exactly how it works here. Let's just do that right now. Okay, here we are with the T. I'm going to show you guys the touch screen navigation. First, let me turn it off. You'll see the Leica logo. We're going to see how quick it is to turn on. I think it takes about a second to power up. Let's see. One Mississippi, two, a oh, little over a second to power on. So when you get the camera on, you have three symbols right here. You have this, which shows the A, which means I'm in aperture priority mode. Let's say I want to change it. We click A. Notice how quick and smooth everything is. So if I want to go to Program AE to make my life simple, I can do that. If I want to click back and go to Aperture Priority, I do that. It's right there. Um, let's say I want to go into the camera, press the camera logo. Here you have the most used um, settings, which you can configure this to, to your liking. So you have up here, I'm just going to go to this one, the tool, which has all of them. I click the tool button. This has every setting on the camera that's available okay and they're all straightforward and they're all simple so right here you can see I'm in auto ISO mode if I want to change that I click and everything's right there I'm gonna keep it in auto <clears throat> white balance there's your white balance so here you have your exposure compensation right there so you move wherever you want that to be Drive mode, single. When this one, when you click, it'll take you from single to continuous. So continuous mode, um, it's pretty quick. I'll actually show you guys how quick it is. Locked focus. For a Leica, that's quick. Um, usually Leicas are slow. Actually, I think it's writing to the internal memory because the Leica T has an internal 16 gigabytes of memory. Because I don't think I put a card in here today. So you have 16 gigs inside the camera. If you lose your SD card, if your SD card poops out on you or it gets full, you have a reserve in the camera, which is really cool. Let's go back to the menu. Uh, so that was drive mode. Then you have multi-field metering. Click it again, it goes to center weighted. Click it again, it goes to spot. So you have all your settings right there. Uh, multi-field works extremely well. Your self timer is right here. You can choose 12 seconds or two seconds. That's your self-timer mode. Your file format, you click it, you go from JPEG to JPEG and DNG, fine to super fine. I keep it in JPEG and RAW, super fine. Focus mode, you want manual focus or do you want autofocus? With the uh, native lenses, I recommend autofocus. 16 megapixel resolution, you can take that to 12, you can take that to seven, you can take that to three, you can go as low as 1.8 megapixels shooting JPEGs with the camera. Autofocus mode. This is going to take you into a sub-menu. You have spot, which will put a little um, teeny spot in the middle, as you can see, for fine focusing. Then you have, let's go back to that, um, one point, which is what I use all the time. Multi-point touch AF or face detection. I just keep it on one point and keep that point right in the center 
That's how I shoot all cameras, uh, but that's just me. You might like multi-point. Flash compensation, video resolution, you can switch between 1080p and 720p. Now this is not going to be some pro video recording machine. Uh, no Leica is. Most cameras aren't. There's only a few that are. But for taking family videos or spur of the moment things, this is great. It works, works fine and it's probably the best video of any Leica, German Leica made to date. Okay, exposure bracketing, flash sync, film mode. You have standard, vivid, natural, black and white natural, or black and white high contrast, which I like a lot actually. So I usually shoot in standard or black and white high contrast, but if you're shooting raw, this really makes no difference because the raw files are raw. You don't have any of these color settings applied to them. So these apply to JPEGs. So what, when I shoot JPEG and RAW, my JPEG will have the setting here and the RAW will not. So then I get to choose what I like best. The camera has built-in Wi-Fi. If you click on Wi-Fi, it's looking for a Wi-Fi connection. I have it off, um, but if you turn it on, you will um, be able to scan for networks. Auto ISO settings. Exposure time. Okay, you can choose your minimum exposure time. They call it max exposure time. But um, say you don't want the camera to go any lower than 1 30th of a second, you click on that. Um, I have it just set to auto, it seems to work fine. Maximum ISO, you can go all the way up to 12,500, which is the maximum ISO of the Leica T. So you're not going to get like the crazy 400,000 ISO of the new Sony AS, um, but that's an abnormal camera. That's something that I have to see. <laughs> um, so this, here we are, we're going on monitor brightness, histogram, you can choose RGB histogram or whatever kind of histogram you want. GPS, the GPS comes into play when you attach the viewfinder on, which I'll show you in a bit, because the, the GPS is built inside of the new viewfinder here, which I'm just going to slide on the camera so you guys can get a look at it. That's the Leica Visiflex, it's the new EVF. It looks a lot like a uh, periscope from a submarine. So now that I hooked on the EVF, you can see that the GPS has highlighted. There, it's turned on. So now when I use the camera, in the EXIF data, it will tell me where I was when I took it, if you use the EVF. But I think that takes a little bit more battery life, so right now I'm going to have it off. Monitor color adjustment. Focus aid on or focus aid off. If you're using M lenses with the new M adapter, then you want that on so you can have focus magnification. Image stabilization off or on. Now Leica says they have image stabilization, but it's kind of not very good image stabilization. It's the same as it was in the X Vario, I believe. So it's, it, I don't really consider it a real image stabilization, though it can make a little improvement. EVF brightness, auto review, that tells you how long you want your auto review after you take an image. Actually, I'm going to turn that off. Oh, you can't turn it off. So there you go. You have one second, three second, five seconds permanent or zoom. I'm going to turn it to one second. There we go. Uh, video stabilization on. EVF color adjustment, auto rotate display, wind elimination for the built in microphone for the video. You can have that off or on. One minute auto LCD off is what I have it set to. You can turn it to 30 seconds one minute or just turn that off. So you have all these settings. So say there's a setting you want to add to the camera menu because the camera menu only has the most used. So you have auto ISO, auto white balance, exposure comp, file format, resolution, flash mode, film mode, Wi-Fi and sleep timer or self timer. Say I want to add acoustic signal. I would never do that to the camera menu. I hold this down. Oops, I did it wrong. I hold this down and I drag it to the camera menu, bingo, it took it. So now if I go to my camera menu, there's acoustic signal. So you can add whatever you like to the, um, to the camera menu. So there we go. So it's basically very simple, very easy to use. That's it as far as the menu system goes. That's all you need to know. You set it up and you really don't need to delve into the menus any further. Uh, this button here is changing, this dial here is changing my aperture right now. As you can see in the upper left here, it's very solid, very nice clicks. This is changing the ISO. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to put it back to auto ISO. 
and it's in its simplicity. Let's click the info button. This gives you different screens to use. You can have your grid, you can have your live histogram. If you hear a noise, that's my dog in the background sneezing. Uh, or you can just have a basic screen with your viewfinder, or you can have the information. So that's basically it. That's the camera. You have your battery there, you have your metering mode, your autofocus mode, your ISO settings. That's in that display mode. That's the display mode I keep on when I use the camera. One thing you may be asking yourself is how do you play back an image? On most cameras you have a play button over here somewhere that you press if you want to check out your image or zoom in on it or what have you. On the Leica T you don't see a play button because there are no buttons on the back. So I'm going to show you how you play back an image and I'm also going to show you the shutter sound right here. So we're going to take a picture of the GX7. The shutter sound is kind of muted sounding kind of quiet, feels very high quality. One more and there we go. So if I want to play back the image, how do I do so? Like I said, it's very Apple-like. You swipe up and there's the images I just took of the GX7. You can slide, uh, I'm not getting enough grip on it. You can slide to the other images back and forth and if you want, you can zoom in just like you do on an iPad by pinching and zooming. So that's basically how the playback works of the Leica T. And one more time, we're gonna, I'm gonna put my mic up close to the camera and we're gonna hear the shutter sound. So I'm gonna take a photo, actually back there. So it's pretty muted. I don't know how it's gonna sound with the mic up close to it, but it's very subdued. Uh, it's nothing like the loud clunk of the Sony a7 um, or some other cameras. Even the Fuji has a little bit of clunkiness to it even though it's, it's semi-quiet. So there you go. There's the shutter sound and the playback method that you use on the Leica T. Now let's take a look at this viewfinder. Like I said, it looks like a periscope from the front. You know, and then here you have your diopter adjustment, like so. It tilts, and the viewfinder itself is um, pretty nice. It's not the largest viewfinder that you can get. Uh, the EVF from the uh, Fuji X-T1 is very large and bright. The EVF from the Olympus EM1 is very large and crisp. This EVF is not as large in size, and believe it or not, this is the day before launch, and Leica never sent me the specs of the EVF. I have no idea the specifications of the EVF. I do know that it's very crisp, very sharp. I can focus the uh, manual M lenses without magnification using this EVF. So it's not the best or brightest or biggest EVF. I don't want to say brightest, it's just as bright as any other EVF. When you hear my dog barking, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I had to pause this because she went on a rampage outside barking. So if you hear her, please ignore her. I'm sorry. Nothing I can do. She's barking at the neighbor dog or something. So this is the EVF. It's uh, The one thing that people are going to not like about it is the price. It's $600 for the EVF with built-in GPS. Um, for $600, it's a little on the pricey side. That's one-third the cost of the camera. The other accessory that's pricey is the Leica M adapter, which I'm going to go get right now. Okay, this is the M adapter made by Leica. It's called the Leica M adapter T because it's going, uh, taking an M lens and mounting it to a T-mount camera. This is considered a T-mount camera, brand new mount for Leica. As you can see here, it has the sensor here to read and communicate with the camera the 6-bit code of the uh, Leica M lens. So this will read the code of the lens, so it has electronics, and it will communicate that to the T, so the T knows what Leica M lens you have on. And I believe, now I, Leica has not told me this, but I believe the reason for that is so it can apply corrections. For example, using a wide-angle lens, uh, you shouldn't have color issues on the T. I asked Stefan Daniel about that, and all he said was M lenses worked very well on the T. I tested a 21 Super Elmar and it was sharp corner to corner, no issues with softness, no issues with color, 
uh, it worked fine. The 50 Summicron I tested was also amazingly good. It looked just like it does on an M with a little bit less of that uh, full frame look going on. Uh, as you can see, the adapter is made in Portugal, um, but it's a very hefty, solid adapter. 600 bucks for this. So when you add the price of the camera, which the price of the camera, when I looked at it in New York and handled it and saw how it was made and the painstaking uh, detail, attention to detail, they asked me how much I thought the camera was going to cost. Being Leica, also look at these straps. They're custom. They stick in like a pin and you need a little pin head to unlock it uh, in that little button there. Um, it's a pretty clever strap system, but it's proprietary and it comes with a strap. The strap itself is a rubber strap which um, grips to your shoulder very, very well and they have a bunch of other straps they're coming out with. But the strap system is unique. It locks in solid as a rock. Uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so the camera itself, they asked me how much I thought it was going to cost. I said $3,500. They said no, $1,900. So that right there is a surprise because this camera is actually a superb camera. For $1,900, bucks, you are getting an APS-C handmade, made in Germany Leica with outstanding image quality. Some of the best I've seen from any APS-C camera whatsoever. Uh, it's up there. Uh, the IQ is just like the X-Vario. Uh, but here you have an option to use whatever lens you want. You can use the zoom lens, which is sort of like the Xveria lens. You can use the 35 Summicron F2 equivalent they have out for it. You can use any number of Leica M lenses using the adapter. Um, so that right there gives you way more choice and way more possibilities to up the image quality over the Xvario. So you're going to get a better image from the T than the X Vario simply because you can use different lenses that will provide better image quality and more unique image quality, depth of field, all that kind of stuff that we like as Leica users that was missing in the X Vario. So you have options and options are always amazingly good when you're talking about a camera system. Sure, they only have two launch lenses. They're Leica lenses. They're not Panasonic lenses. They're very high quality lenses, sharp corner to corner, superb color, superb micro contrast. So Leica is working on more lenses. I don't know when they're coming out. They'll be out later. But until then, you have these two lenses as well as any M-mount lens that you can find. You can find M-mount lenses for three, four $400 for old vintage lenses. For example, find an old 50 Sumerit. That will give you character up the ass for 400 bucks. Um, and you can use it on the T as long as you have the adapter. Now Leica tells me that at launch, the T will ship. It will have, they will have the two lenses available, the viewfinder, the adapter, as well as a case and a bag, all at launch. So they're launching it now. You can pre-order it. Uh, you can pre-order it from Ken Hansen, the legendary Leica dealer. Uh, you can email him at uh, khpny, khpny19 at aol.com. He's a legendary Leica guy, man. He'll He'll take your pre-order. You can also pre-order to popflash.com, Pro Shop for Photographers. Uh, there's all kinds of places you can pre-order it. I have dealers that I've used for many, many years that I trust, B&H Photo and Amazon, uh, all those guys. So you can pre-order this now, and Leica is shipping all of this good stuff at the end of May of 2014. So look for that in May of 2014 if you pre-order now. The Leica T, a lot of people have said, how does it compare to the Micro Four Thirds EM-1? Well, uh, image quality is better on the T. Uh, image quality is great on the EM-1. I've said that from day one. I've been excited about it. But um, it, the Leica T has better contrast, better micro contrast, better color. Uh, it, it, it's an APS-C size sensor, so you're getting a little bit more richness in the file. Uh, there's something about the way the files look from the T. Like I said, they look like the X2 files. They look like the Xvario files in color and rendering, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, the bad thing about the Xvario was you could only use it in daylight because of the slow zoom that was permanently attached. Here you have an option, like I said, you can add an F95 Noctilux if you wanted to to this camera. So image quality for me is up there with the best, if not the best, of the APS-C sensor cameras. The user experience is absolutely the best of any APS-C sensor camera, of actually any camera. This touchscreen interface and the simplicity of this camera is amazing. It's so fun to use. The pride of ownership is sky high of this camera. 
um, because you're, you feel it when you hold it. You feel the quality. This is all metal. Like I said, this is carved out of a solid block of aluminum. You can see that solid block on my website and all over the internet. Um, the only disappointments for me is I wish it had a built-in EVF. But the funny thing is, using it with this CVF, I really enjoyed it. Um, it still fit in my bag without a problem with the EVF attached. And I had a few people come up to me and say, what is that on your camera? And I would say, oh, it's an EVF. People who really didn't know much about cameras, they didn't know I was testing an unreleased camera. There, and then one guy's like, that's the coolest part of the camera, that thing on top. It makes it look so cool. So a lot of people liked the EVF, and I enjoyed using it. I had no problem with it. It has eye detection, so when you lift your eye up, it'll switch. Um, and, you know, it works like mostly every other EVF that's out there. Uh, the battery charger, it comes with a dedicated battery charger. You don't just get a USB cable. The battery goes here, and it locks into place. So when you want to take the battery out, you unlock it, slide the battery out. It's a very nice charger, plugs into the wall. So like I said, it's better than getting just a USB cable, which is what Sony has been cheaping out and doing for some reason lately. Uh, so you have that, you have the adapter. Of course, there's other accessories coming out with the T. Uh, they're gonna have shells for it that are like orange, yellow, all kinds of weird colors if you wanna stand out and be unique and be original. And that's what this camera is all about. It's all about originality. Uh, the Leica T, is unique, it's different. There's no other camera out that does what it does in regards to the menu system and the touchscreen system. It's like it's like an Apple camera, I'm telling you guys. It reminds me so much of something Apple would put out. Over here is, by the way, is where your memory card goes. That's it, that's the only compartment you have that opens up besides the battery. You have the built-in flash as I showed you, and everything is solid, everything is quality. These dials are quality and very solid. Um, it's a very, very nice camera. You don't have to have the EVF. You can frame using the uh, LCD, but for me, especially of using M lenses, this is mandatory. Uh, so 600 bucks, it's pricey. I'm gonna tell you right there. The zoom lens, I told Leica, I said it's too expensive. It's an 18 to 56, f3.5 to f5.6, and they're saying it's about 1700 bucks. I said, that's too expensive. You're gonna get people complaining because it's a slow aperture lens. Their explanation was, well, it's a real Leica lens. The quality is outstanding. There's nothing like it. So I was like, yada, 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 yeah, sure. So when I use the lens, you know, if anybody out there knows me, you know that I'm not a fan of zoom lenses in the first place, especially slow zoom lenses because they're so limited for the, the light. Um, but this lens is quite special, actually. Uh, it's very sharp, corner to corner. The color's outstanding. You can see all the samples on my website of how it renders. It may or may not be to your taste, but it's that Leica X look. Uh, it just looks crisp. It has a dimensionality to it. Um, so I can say without a shadow of a doubt, this is indeed a true Leica lens, Leica quality. Um, so when you're talking about Leica M lenses, they range anywhere from what, three grand up to 11 grand? Um, so this coming in at 1700 bucks, I guess if you're getting a real Leica lens, there you go. Um, it's worth it, if you like zoom lenses. They also have the 23 Summicron F2, which equals a 35 Summicron F2, which looked fantastic. They did not send me one to review, but I saw it in New York, and I think that's coming in at just under two grand where a legitimate M35 Summicron is, what, 3500 bucks now, something like that. Um, so you're, getting, you're paying less for the lenses because the lenses are made in Japan by Leica. This camera body is made in Germany at the new factory, uh, which Leica is just about ready to open. So there you go. That's the Leica T overview. There's not much more I can say about it. 1900 bucks for the camera. Lenses range from 1700 to 2000 uh, more lenses are on the way. The Leica adapter is coming in at 600 bucks. It has electronics on it to communicate. The EVF is 600 bucks. If you were to buy a Leica T, both new lenses, the EVF, the Leica M adapter, a case, a leather case for the camera, and the leather bag setup, it's going to cost you about seven grand. Now, seven grand will buy you one Leica M body only. Seven grand can buy you a lot of other mirrorless cameras and a full set of lenses. So to buy the Leica, you must want something that's special and unique. You must want a Leica. Not everybody likes Leica. A lot of people bash Leica because they think they're overpriced. And a lot of times they are overpriced. Um, 
That's just the name of the game when you're purchasing a Leica. But what you get with a Leica is something handmade, something unique, something beautiful, something that, yes, you can keep for years and years and years and pass down. There's people shooting the Digilux 2 that came out many moons ago, and there's people still using it because it's so beautiful. So this is one of those cameras that, once again, Leica has come out with. And to me, it's, it's fantastic. It's beautiful, takes amazing images, uh, has versatility of the M lenses being able to be used and new lenses coming out. I wish it had a built-in viewfinder, but I actually quite enjoy this external viewfinder. So uh, if you don't like Leica, don't sit there and hate and bash on them because of the price, because you do get a quality product. They're a small um, company. They do not produce nearly as many cameras as Nikon, Canon, Sony, Olympus, all those other guys. This is a niche product. So for this kind of niche product, handmade, um, you're going to pay more regardless whether or not it's Leica. But being that it's Leica, it's going to be more expensive. But you get ultimate pride of ownership. You get quality build, quality craftsmanship, quality image quality, up there with the best, if not the best. So it's up to you to decide if you want this Leica T. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I, I thought I was going to like it. I actually went to the meeting with Leica in New York to tell them they were screwed. I was If they were gonna show me uh, any X copy in a plastic body, I was gonna say, you guys are screwed. The thing that won me over was the attention to detail and construction, the brand new touchscreen interface, and the fact that the quality is there. So there's nothing to complain about except the price. So if you don't like the price, don't buy it. But uh, you can't say that it's a bad camera, you can't say anything bad about it, it's great. So there you go. There's the like a T. If you want to see the full review, go to stevehuffphoto.com. The full written review is there, 10,000 words. I'll put the link in the video description. And uh, again, it's up for pre-order now. Today's launch day. Well, this video is being posted on launch day. You might be watching it days, weeks, months, years later. So I hope you enjoyed my look at the T. This is just the video overview. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumbs up and subscribe. And thanks again for checking out stevehuffphoto.com. I appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye. Moving on the outside, tip me out, three wide, and now charging up to be right along the cranked up, but Autocrat is extremely wide off the turn as they move into the stretch. Tip me out is in front now by two lengths.